It's time for another video quiz from Flight Insight. It's the last week of July, and while most people are enjoying Oshkosh and our 20% off sale on all training courses, which you can get when you use coupon code OSH20, we're down in Texas, shooting an instrument approach into Addison, a busy class delta in Dallas. We'll ask a number of questions on this approach and give you a few seconds to answer yourself before revealing the correct answer. Question one, where is the initial approach fix for this approach? Banu intersection, Maverick VOR, there is no initial approach fix, or Jared intersection. It's a bit of a trick question. There is no initial approach fix here. An IAF would be noted as such with those letters, but they don't appear anywhere on the plate. Banu is the intermediate fix, and Jared is an intersection where the final approach fix is located for the localizer approach. Maverick isn't a point on the approach at all. It's used to identify the Banu and Jared intersections. So with no IAF and no procedure turn depicted, how do we join this approach? Notice the note at the top showing that radar is required for the procedure entry. We'll have to be radar identified by ATC and will receive vectors for the approach. This leads into question two. Can you join the approach from the Maverick VOR? No, it is not an initial approach fix and it's unlikely you'll receive radar vectors from there. No, the Maverick VOR is the holding point. Yes, the Maverick VOR is one of the approach transitions. Yes, but only if you fly outbound from the VOR along the 035 radial to Jarrett. The first question should give you a hint that the answer is no, it's not an initial approach fix. Theoretically, you could be given a vector that overflies the VOR. But that's unlikely as it's located right on the field at Dallas-Fort Worth International and the route to intercept the inbound course from there points you in the wrong direction for the approach with no procedure turn. Question 3. If the approach lighting system is in-op, do your visibility minimums increase on the ILS approach for your Cessna 172, which is a Cat A aircraft? Yes to one and a quarter mile. Yes to one quarter mile. Yes to half a mile. No, they remain at one mile. Our visibility minimums stay at one mile. Normally, inoperative equipment like failed approach lighting is mentioned in the in-op components table, showing that for an ILS, we increase the visibility minimums one quarter mile. But the approach plate notes that the in-op table doesn't apply for the ILS. The reason is that we already have an unconventionally high visibility minimum for an ILS, so there's no need to lengthen it further. Question four. You're at 2,500 feet and have been given a radar vector to intercept the localizer and are cleared for the approach. You lose all radio function after that point. You should climb to 2,700, the minimum safe altitude for this sector, descend to 2,000, the glide slope intercept altitude, maintain 2,500 until established, then follow the altitudes published on the procedure and continue the approach. Maintain 2,500, fly the approach course, and execute the published missed approach. We should stay at 2,500 and only descend once established on the approach. If cleared for the approach and you lose communications, you're expected to perform the approach as cleared. You can't descend right away though because you're not on a published segment of the approach. You're on a vector. Once inbound, we can descend to 2,000, which is glide slope intercept altitude. Last question. Let's say you're flying the loke approach. How far from the runway threshold is the visual descent point? 2.2 miles, 1.1 miles, 5.2 miles, or at the runway threshold? This is tricky. It's 1.1 miles. However, it's 2.2 DME from the localizer. Why the difference? Because the localizer antenna is situated at the far end, the departure end of runway 16. The runway is over 7,000 feet long, about 1.1 nautical miles. So the beginning of the runway is 1.1 miles from the localizer, and it's another 1.1 miles to the visual descent point, 2.2 DME total. This can be complicated if you're overlaying the GPS when flying this approach. Notice that as we arrive at the visual descent point, we see the DME reading 2.2 miles, but the GPS shows 1.1 miles from the runway threshold. There is no GPS fix for the localizer. This can cause some confusion when using GPS, which interestingly doesn't exist when shooting it with just traditional radio navigation and DME. That's it for today. How did you do? Let us know in the comments. And check out all our courses at flight-insight.com courses.